Okay, here we're going to be looking at amortizing debt here for a lease here, and we're going to be setting up a debt amortization schedule here for, and this amortizing debt here for a lease is similar to amortizing debt here for a note or a loan here. But with the difference comes in what is included here in the payments. So let's go look at a typical lease here. So we have, in this case, a machine that we're leasing out here. Its cost here is $11,700, and then the leasee uh, is going to pay a $4,000 payment here at the beginning of the lease. So we have a balance here of $7,700 remaining here on this lease. The difference between the cost less this initial payment here. So the $7,700 here, this is the amount that we're going to be looking here to amortize down to a zero balance here at the end of the lease. So the $7,700 here represents the uh, fair value of this lease or the present value of this lease after this initial payment here. So let's go look at uh, how we'd uh, relate here the $7,700 back our, to our payments that we're going to have to make here. So let's go, here's our payment amounts that we're going to make. We're going to make uh, $4,000 payments here, or the leasee is going to make $4,000 payments here at the beginning of each year here, uh, year uh, X1 through X3 here. So what we have to do is we have to discount these four thousand uh, dollar payment amounts here back to what they'd be worth here at the beginning of the lease here. So in this case we had sixteen percent interest that we're discounting it at here. That's the lease uh, implied interest rate here in the lease and then we have three periods here and then those four thousand dollar payments and they come at the beginning of the lease here so discounting them back they're worth ten thousand four hundred and twenty dollars and next we have to deal with this last payment here of two thousand dollars now that represents in this case a uh, guaranteed residual value I have it thrown in here so we have to discount that back as well so uh, I've got it here at the 1231 x3 but we're still going to discount it back here at the beginning of the year because that's when uh, that that is what the uh, uh, lease would require it here as far as its present value. So we discounted that back here at uh, for th three years and we get $1,281. That's what it's worth here at the beginning of the lease. So combining the two, uh, these present value amounts here, $10,420 plus the $1,280, we come up with $11,700. Now that represents here uh, the machine cost, $11,700. But this first payment here was made at the beginning of the lease. So uh, we were left with this balance of $7,700. So uh, our present value here of our payments has to equal the uh, present value here or the uh, fair value of the machine, $11,700 in this case. But because we subtracted out this first payment here of $4,000, our balance here was $7,700. So the key here is uh, making our uh, payment schedule here based on an interest rate equal our uh, loan or our lease amount here that has to be paid off. So let's just look at how this table would work here as far as calculating the interest and the principal here. So let's look at the uh, beginning of the third year here. We have an interest here of $789. Now that was based on the beginning balance in this case here. Uh, amortization balance here of $4,932. 16% times that gives us $789. So the difference here, our interest, difference between our interest here and the payment of $4,000 gives us a principal amount that was paid on the principal here of $3,210 in this case. So uh, to determine our carrying value for the period here, we just take our $3,210 and subtract that from the beginning balance here of the uh, principal amount here, and that would give us $1,721. So what I'm looking at here uh, for this debt amortization here is that our fair value or our of the lease here for our balance amount here and the total cost here of $11,700. Our payment schedule here has to be set up based on the interest rate implied here in this lease. The payment schedule has to be set up such that when you discount it back to its present value here at the beginning of the lease, the uh, uh, present value amount here of these total lease payments has to equal uh, our lease balance here or what our fair value of the lease is.
Okay, let's look at the difference between a guaranteed and unguaranteed residual value here for this lease and how we'd set up our debt amortization schedules. Now in the case here where we had a guaranteed residual value, in this case it was $2,000 for this bargain purchase option, both the lesser and the lessee would use this debt amortization schedule here that includes this uh, guaranteed residual value here of $2,000. But if it was the case here where this uh, residual value here was unguaranteed or the lessee wasn't responsible for this $2,000 amount here, then the lesser would still be using this debt amortization schedule which includes this a guaranteed residual value which is unguaranteed uh, for the lessee and he would be using the gross investment here. They'd use the four, three four thousand dollar payments plus this two thousand uh, dollar amount here that is essentially unguaranteed here for the lessee. But the uh, lesser would be using the same amortization schedule here. But for the lessee here, we'd have to set up a, a new schedule here if this residual value here is unguaranteed. So that this new schedule here would not include this uh, $2,000 bargain purchase option here. It would only include these $4,000 payments here. And we'd be discounting these $4,000 payments back here, again using the same interest rate here of 16% here and they'd be discounted back to the uh, uh, at payments received at the beginning of each period. So discounting these back here, we would come up with uh, their present value here of those payments of $10,420. Now going over here to our uh, balance or our uh, on what the lessee would be including here in the balance here for this uh, amortization schedule here. So uh, the uh, present value of those four payments discounted back here was $10,420. And then there was a payment made up front here of $4,000 uh, by the lessee here. So the balance here was $6,420. So that's what the lessee would be recording here and have to amortize down uh, for their uh, amortization here of this debt here and that would give us a different interest uh, expense here and a different principal amount compared to what the lessor has on their schedule. Okay now looking at our guaranteed versus our unguaranteed residual values here. So for the lesser they'd be working off the amortization schedule here that includes the residual value and uh, just looking at our interest revenue and expense calculations here for the first year 20x1 in this case the lesser would have recorded here an interest revenue of $1,232 versus the lessee would have recorded only $1,027 here because they're working off this other amortization schedule that doesn't include the guaranteed residual value so you have a difference here of $205 here. So we can go on down through the entire uh, three years here. We have a total uh, interest revenue the lesser would have is $2,296 versus the lessee of $1,578 of interest expense. So the difference here would be seven. $718. Now this here presents a problem here when we're uh, doing consolidated financial statements here between the lesser and the lessee here where we have to consolidate them and this is what we'd have to account for. I'm not going to get into it here but this is the problem it presents here is the difference between uh, the interest revenue recorded by the lesser and the interest uh, expense recorded by the lessee. Okay, to make a point here for consolidated financial statements for a lease here between the subsidiary and the parent corporation. And uh, what we'd be using here is this debt amortization schedule here. And for the payment amount here, those would be the minimum lease payments receivable by the lesser in this case. And then the interest uh, calculation here on the amortization schedule, that could be the interest payable, receivable, earned, unearned interest for both the lesser and the lessee in this case. And then the principal amount here, that would be the obligation under the capital lease here for the lessee. And then of course we have our carrying value or our book value here. But this debt amortization schedule for the consolidation purposes is where we could pull most of our information off here for this lease.